a cheerful welcome and very good evening to one and all present for the program. I am Navyashri, PG Coordinator, Department of Commerce, St. Teresa's Degree College for Women, take the privilege of hosting today's session. PG Department of Commerce, in association with IQAC and Research Cell of the College, has organized one week national level virtual faculty development program on research methodology and statistical tools used in research. The main objective of this program is to provide the participants with the fundamentals of research design and methodology to conduct research and to guide them in writing good research paper using best statistical tool in research. We have an eminent person, Dr. D. Kumaresan sir, as a resource person for this FDP. I wholeheartedly welcome you for the program, sir. Thank you, madam. It is important to seek the blessings of Lord Almighty before commencement of any program. So now I call Ms. Pavitra, student of final year BCom, to invoke the God's blessings. Over to you, Pavitra. Sarva Sristi Kata Devani Namma Jeevan Nima Garchani Nima Preetiya Salvi Nena Pali Namma Padu Kella Nima Garpani Namma Sarva Svani Nitani Stuti Vandani Paramatmani Sarva Sristi Kata Devani Namma Jeevan Nima Garchani Nima Preetiya Salvi Nena Pali Namma Padu Kella Nima Garpani now we give another bow and a medagali. Namaya Jeevana Payana Dali Preeti Yu Neeti Yu Namadagali Namaya Jeevana Payana Dali Hasabala Bila Kannu Karuni Suni Jagavannu Bila Kailu Krupi Niduni Sarva Sristi Karta Devani Namma Jeevan Nima Garchani Nima Preetiya Salvi Nena Pali Namma Padu Kella Nima Garpani Thank you, Patra, for the mesmerizing invocation song. We all felt blessed indeed. We must always welcome the challenges, look for the opportunities in every situation to learn and grow in wisdom. Now, I call Padmavati from final year MCOM to deliver the formal welcome address. Over to you, Padma. Thank you, ma'am. Learning is creation, not consumption. Knowledge is not something a learner absorbs, but something a learner creates. Good evening to one and all. I am Padmavati T, pursuing second year MCOM in St. Teresa's Degree College for Women. I am here to welcome you all to this program, that is, one week national level virtual faculty development program on research methodology and statistical tools used in research. First and foremost, I would like to welcome our principal, Dr. Sister Prema, to this program in her absence. I now like to welcome our, our vice principal, Mrs. Malika Ma'am, IPAC director who supports and guides us all the time. A, cord, a cordial welcome to you, ma'am. Thank you. My pleasure, ma'am. I extend my heartfelt welcome to our today's resource person, Dr. D. Kumaresan, sir. Sir is an inspiring and motivating personality. 
sir we are waiting to hear a lot from you heartily welcome to you sir thank you my pleasure sir i would like to welcome our academic coordinator mr rajesh sir to this program a warm welcome to you sir thank you ma my pleasure sir and also i welcome our pg coordinator mrs navyashree ma'am who took her core interest in conducting this program a joyful welcome to you ma'am thank you padma pleasure ma'am extend a warm welcome to all the faculties and student coordinators of st therese's degree college for women a cordial welcome to you all last but not the least i would like to welcome all the participants of various colleges across the nation who are eagerly waiting and highly interested to learn a lot from this program a warm welcome to you all thank you one and all thank you padma for your delightful welcome address thank you ma'am now let us have a view of the guidelines to the participants so here we go dear participants kindly mute your audio and video throughout the webinar kindly refrain from introducing and greeting each other or with the speaker in the chat box if you have any questions during the presentation please type them in the chat box in your control panel with your name and college name i will bring them up at the end of the presentation and we will also have time for question and answer at the end this program is allowed with publicly visible chat keep your consideration helpful and considerate of the host and other participants the participation e certificate shall be issued only upon the successful submission of the feedback form which shall be posted on the last day of the ftp the e certificates will be issued to all the registered participants within 10 days after the successful completion of the program provided you attend all the days sessions and fill the feedback form on the last day i request all the participants to strictly adhere to all the guidelines and kindly cooperate to ensure smooth flow of the program as mentioned earlier today we have an eminent speaker and esteemed subject expert dr d kumar esen sir as a resource person we will kumar esen sir will be emphasizing on the research methodology and the statistical tools used in research sir has got numerous accomplishments in his feathers let's have a quick guest introduction so now i call nida from final year bba to introduce the resource person of the program over to you nida thank you ma'am success in life is not for those who run fast but for those who keep running and always on the move good evening everyone i am nidayas from final year bba st teresa's degree college for women i deem it a great honor to introduce today's resource person dr d kumar esen sir professor and director of ksr college of arts and science for women tamil nadu sir has completed master degree in four subjects like mcom msc in psychology mba and ma in english sir has completed mphil and phd in commerce and is qualified in slet in commerce conducted by bharati darshan university above all sir has been honored with the awards like delit shiksha ratan puraskar lifetime achievement award by esn publications led outstanding achievement award distinguished honor award 2020 best citizen of india from international publishing house dr sarvapalli radhakrishnan national award sir we are glad to have you amidst us thank you you can now take over the session sir thank you thank you very much for the nice welcome and wonderful introduction the most respected principal of st therese's college madam vice principal head of the department 
faculty coordinator of this program, all the participants, a warm and pleasant evening to one and all. At the very outset, I would like to thank the management principal, vice principal, coordinator and the faculty members for having given me wonderful opportunity for acting as the resource person for the one week national level virtual faculty development program on research methodology and statistical tools used in social science research. Indeed, it is a very happy moment for me because in this college, I have already conducted a program last year. Again, I have been invited. So I'm very happy. For the next six days, we are going to discuss various aspects relating to research methodology and statistical tools. Today, we are going to discuss about the introduction to research. It is a very nice topic. I'd like to congratulate and appreciate the efforts of the organizing committee for having given six wonderful topics for all the six days of this program. Every day, the topic is very nice. And I assure that I will do justice for the opportunity given to me. So with this uh, brief introduction, let me share my presentation. Thank you very much. Could you please stop uh, your presentation, uh, Ms. Angel? Thank you very much. My humble request to all the participants, as uh, uh, already given by uh, Navya Shri Madam, the instructions here. Uh, kindly mute your audio and video throughout the session. And if you have any queries, you can put it in the chat box at the end of the session. We'll be having nice interaction at the end of the session. You just listen to uh, the uh, address. And finally, at the end of the session, let us have the discussion or interaction, whatever will be. So if you have any queries, you can note it down and you can put it in the chat box at the end of this. Thank you very much. Are you able to see the PPT, madam? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you, madam. Thank you. So today's topic, we are going to discuss about introduction to research. First of all, what is research? You know pretty well many of the participants are um, already doctorates and some of the faculty members are there. Uh, some students are research scholars may be there. Anyhow, let us start with humble uh, beginning. So from the, right from the meaning, definition, uh, we will start the introduction. So it's a systematic process introduction I mean, to research, we have to understand what is research. Research is a systematic process. It includes collection and Hello. analysis of data. Yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, yes sir, yes. your PPT is not uh, visible. Actually, we are not able to see. Is it so? Madam said it is visible. Uh, okay, sir, okay. it is visible. Please check it, sir. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. The PPT is visible. Kindly check your network, sir. Okay. Thank you very much for your concern. Please check the uh, net connection as Madam told. So it's a systematic process. It includes collection and analysis of data with the purpose of drawing conclusion. So this is what research. Research is not a single word. We can divide it into two words, that is re plus search. Re means again. Again and again we are searching. We are searching for a solution to a problem. Or searching for knowledge. For that purpose, the research is conducted. So re plus search. Searching again and again in a systematic and scientific way to find solution 
to the selected problem or to gain knowledge with the purpose of drawing conclusion so that is called research so re plus search re plus search not only again and again the search is not only conducted again and again but re search means repeated search reliable search required search relevant search so what is the thing which we are going to search must be reliable must be required you have to search repeatedly until you get the final solution or until you can draw the nice conclusion till that you have to conduct research so where does the research originate from the research originates from the problem so problem is the origin and the solution is the end of the research of course you know pretty well it is not an end it is a beginning of another research so at the end of the conclusion or at the end of your research study you have to include one more section that is called direction for future research so the conclusion is not an end itself it is a beginning for another research so research is a continuous process like learning research is a never ending process it is going on going on going on so it is a systematic process what do you mean by systematic process you have to do this uh, research in a proper manner step by step manner first step you have to do this second step you have to do this third step you have to do this like that step by step manner you have to do that is called systematic way or systematic process if you conduct the research in such a systematic manner your research will be completed smoothly without having any uh, uh, difficulty so whatever you do it must be completed it must be accomplished your goal must be achieved you have to complete your process successfully smoothly if at all you want smooth and successful process you have to follow the systematic procedures so step by step manner first what to do then next what to do then next what to do that is what called systematic process so systematic process it includes collection and analysis of data so the data are collected from several sources it may be from primary sources or it may be from secondary sources that is different so the data sources may be classified into primary sources and secondary sources what is called primary sources the data collected as a first hand information by the research scholar itself or the researcher himself or by the uh, uh, person or assistant appointed by him for the purpose of collection of data from the specific or selected respondents so that is called primary sources the primary data may be collected in different ways by conducting interview again interview may be classified into different styles face to face or personal interview if you go to the person and talk to him or interact with him and conduct interview face to face or personally it is said to be personal interview while conducting the interview the researcher asks questions to the respondent and his answers or his responses are recorded by the researcher himself so there is a codification of answers given by the respondent that is recorded 
by the researcher himself this is the main difference between interview schedule and the questioner understand so in conducting interview you are asking the question your respondent is giving answers you are only entering the responses whereas in the case of questioner you prepare a structured questioner in consultation with the experts maybe you can conduct pilot study with a small group of respondents and if you get responses from the a smaller group that is in the pilot study you may be getting several ideas see some of your questions may not be relevant what questions you have included in your questionnaire thinking that it is relevant when it is distributed to the respondent he may be expert in that field so he may be telling you no no this is not relevant and some of them may be telling why you have not included this particular question this is more relevant you have not considered you have not included like that so different opinions may be collected from the uh, sample respondents during the pilot study so after conducting the pilot study you may redraft the questionnaire so certain questionnaires certain questions which have uh, uh, informed by your respondents that they are irrelevant that should be eliminated that should be deleted and if some other questions are required to be included as pointed out by your respondents in the pilot study that may be included so final draft of questionnaire is prepared and administered among the uh, respondents so this is second method conducting interview is the first method and collection of data through questionnaire is second method in the interview method i told you, you know personal interview is the uh, one of the styles another one see nowadays we are contact we are contacting the people uh, uh, through phone so that is called telephone interview either personal interview or telephone interview we can contact the respondents and collect the data this one is interview method then structured questionnaire questionnaire may be administered among the respondents you go to the respondent or you may send it through mail and nowadays we are using the google forms so using the social media we are collecting the data we are sending the questionnaire through whatsapp through instagram like that we are uh, sending the questionnaire and ask the respondents to fill it up collected we, we are collecting the uh, duly filled in questionnaire later it is called uh, questionnaire method yet another method is there that is observation method so in the observation method there is no contact between the researcher and the respondent the, re the respondent he himself uh, he is doing something we are sitting far away or we are uh, uh, standing away from the respondent we are just watching we are just observing what he is doing like that uh, we are observing so through observation also we can collect the primary data so these are the different uh, methods of collection of primary data but as far as the secondary data are concerned they are uh, already collected by somebody for some other purposes so that is used by the researcher it is called secondary data the secondary data are mainly collected from the annual reports of companies or from the official websites of companies or bsc websites or some other databases are there like cmie is there pravas is there then money control is there yahoo finance is there some uh, some reliable databases are there so from those databases you can collect the secondary data so what is the uh, main difference between primary data and secondary data while collecting the primary data you have the focus 
you have already decided what is required what is expected you have decided so with that purpose only you have drafted the questionnaire or interview schedule so all the uh, information you sought have been included as questions in the questionnaire or interview schedule so you can collect all the relevant information you expect so it is called tailor made whereas in the case of secondary data it is a ready made information you collect the data as it is so it may or may not be suitable to your purpose you have collected but you can never say that it is perfectly relevant for your study may or may not be sometimes it may be some other times it may not be completely perfect completely suitable to your study so that is called secondary data so primary data is a tailor made data it is uh, uh, collected according to your specification it fits to your like uh, a uh, uh, tailor made address fits to your body absolutely um, uh, and perfectly whereas if you buy a ready made dress it may or may not be uh, uh, suitable or fit to your body like that this uh, secondary data may or may not be perfectly suitable for your study in that case you have to modify modify means you should not uh, 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 change the values but something may be uh eliminated or something may be removed or something may be additionally computed with the available information so that is called secondary data so through these methods we collect the data then we have to analyze the data for analysis we have uh, different methods collection of data is a, is an art analysis of data is another art that and all we are going to discuss in the days to come so uh, uh, i think this kind of introduction is enough so what we are doing is for the purpose of observation of findings making or drawing conclusion so this is what called uh, uh, research so research is a systematic process including collection and analysis of data for drawing conclusion okay what is the meaning of research i told you already it's a search for knowledge it is a scientific and systematic search information on a specific topic so for a specific purpose you are collecting pertinent information so that should be searched that should be uh, 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 we have to find it out so in a scientific or systematic way clifford woody has defined the research defining and redefining problems formulating hypotheses or suggested solutions collecting organizing and evaluating data making deductions and uh, reaching conclusions and at the last carefully testing the conclusions to determine whether they fit the formulating hypothesis so while collecting the information we have to collect the information in a systematic and scientific way okay after uh, defining and redefining the problem so first thing we have to define the problem if necessary we have to redefine okay we have defined the problems we have framed the objectives after that we have decided what are the variables what are the dependent variables what are the independent variables what type of methodology we are following whether it is a descriptive study or exploratory study or analytical study based on that if it is descriptive study there is no need for hypothesis if you are 
going for analytical study, we need hypothesis. So we have to formulate the hypothesis. What are the different types of hypothesis? That is all we are going to discuss later. So hypothesis are called suggested solutions. Hypothesis means assumptions. So we are assuming something that the results of the study may be like this. At the time of starting the study itself, we assume that the outcome may be like this. After testing, we come to the conclusion whether what we assumed earlier is correct or not. So we have to test our assumption at the end. So defining and redefining problems, formulating hypothesis or suggested answers, then we collect the data, organize the data, evaluate or analyze the data. After analyzing the data, we have to make certain deductions, what are to be included, what are to be excluded, like that. Then we make the findings. From the findings, we offer suggestions that is different. But our end process is, our final step is, to reach the conclusion. So this is what I have concluded from my study. This is what I have observed. These are the findings. For these findings, I have offered these suggestions and finally I conclude like this. So the conclusion part should be very and my dear friends, the conclusion part, see I have seen in several theses, it runs up, up to several pages, oh my god, no, 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 conclusion should be within a single paragraph, my dear friends, please keep in mind, conclusion part should be within a single paragraph, and that paragraph should, should include the answer to your research question. What is your research problem? What is your title? So for that title or for that particular research problem, you have found the solution. So what is your final conclusion? What is the answer for your problem? That should be included in the concluding part. Not general description. You should never include any general text there. It should be completely based on your research, your findings. It should answer your research question asked at the beginning of the study. So question is beginning, answer is at the end. So that is why we call it as concluding part. So concluding part, should include only the answer to your question. So conclusions to determine whether the uh, uh, hypothesis you have formulated are correct or not. That is called research. Then we can define the research like this. Again, scientific study by which means of by means of logical and systematized techniques and aims to discover either to discover new facts or verify and test old facts. So either you have to discover new facts from your study or you have to test and verify whether the old facts are correct or not to the present situation. So there may be some old facts. Now you have to apply the fact to the current situation and you have to test whether the old facts or the existing facts are still holding good in the present situation, in the current situation. For that purpose, the research is conducted. So it is aimed 
to analyze their sequences, interrelationships, and explanations. So three purposes: sequences, interrelationships, and the explanations, which are derived within an appropriate theoretical frame of reference. Reference underlined. Whatever you do, there must be some references. If you include any variable, there must be some reference. If you include any concept or any theory, there must be some reference. If you include any particular statistical tool, tool for a particular problem, there must be some reference. Even in the finding part, in the R&D part, that is results and discussion part, particularly in the discussion part, you are giving your findings, you have to include the references which are uh, uh, in accordance with, or your findings are in accordance with, or the references favoring your findings, or the references against your, your findings. Both are to be included. See, you have analyzed, for example, uh, consumer satisfaction, consumer satisfaction uh, towards a particular product. Okay. Some previous studies you have reviewed. From the previous studies you have uh, reviewed, some studies may be telling that the consumers are satisfied. Some of the studies may be uh, giving your uh, giving their conclusion that the consumers are not satisfied. So according to your study, you are telling that the consumers are satisfied. So you have to get the backup of your study with the previous references which support your findings. So that is to be included at the same time which are against your findings are against your findings. That is also to be included. That may also be included. Then you can develop new scientific tools, concepts, and theories which would facilitate reliable and valid study of human behavior in decision making. So this is what the apt definition and short definition of research. The same thing, definition of research. So research is a systematic process of collecting and logically analyzing data for some specific purpose. Research methods have been developed for acquiring knowledge by reliable and valid procedures, underlying valid procedures. Data collection may be done with measurement techniques, extensive interviews and observations or a set of documents. Set of documents means Structured questionnaires. Okay. Sir, so what is the purpose of research? Why a research is required to be conducted? Is there any specific purpose? See, I have given the reference. Paul is in SE in 2003. They have given in their study that purpose. The research is conducted for several purposes, as uh, pointed out by Collins and S.E. Review or synthesize existing knowledge. When discussing about uh, research, I told you re plus search, repeated search, required search, relevant search, again and again. So review or synthesize the existing knowledge. Some knowledge is there. We are testing, we are reviewing, or we are 
synthesizing the existing knowledge. For that purpose, the research may be conducted. <clears throat> Next one, to investigate existing solutions or problems. See, we have uh, uh, studied uh, McGregor's X theory and Y theory. He has given two concepts, two opposite concepts. X theory says that an ordinary employee is not willing to work. We have to motivate him. We have to insist him. We have to induce him. Then only he will do the work. Then, why theory says an ordinary employee is willing to work himself without any compulsion. So voluntarily, he is doing his work. He is doing the work assigned to him. So X theory is there, Y theory is there. You are conducting the research among your employees. Being an HR manager, you are required to test whether our employees are following X theory or not following X theory, or they are following Y theory. So in that case, the existing situations, the existing problems are investigated. They are testing, or we are testing the existing theories, the existing, uh, uh, prob uh, existing problems. Then we have to provide solution to the selected problems. We have selected certain problems, we are testing. Why we have conducted the research? See, there is a company. It is uh, running. It has high rate of sales. The sales uh, volume is increasing year to year. Every year it is increasing at a higher growth. Naturally, the profits should should also increase commensurating with the sales, you know. But this company says, my sales volume increases, but my profit is not increasing in accordance with the sales. In that case, there are some problems. So where is the leakage of profit? That we have to understand. If we find out that particular leakage point, then we have to provide solutions. Then we have to explore and analyze more general issues. Whenever we conduct a study, there should be some general issues. That is, uh, social implications must be there. Not only specific to particular company, particular industry, like that. It may be like case study. That is different. That is also a research. That is also a part of research. But mostly, you have to analyze more general issues, social issues, societal implications must be there for your study. So, for that purpose, the research is conducted. Then construct or create new procedures or systems. So these are the systems uh, followed. You know, uh, pretty well, we conduct a time study, motion study and all. So from time study, what we are doing? We have to reduce the time of work. Time taken for the work sh should be reduced. Similarly, in the motion study, we have to reduce the movement. The motions into involved in the work should be reduced. See, you are moving from point A to point B and point C, for example. So one origin and two destinations. Point B and point C are destinations. You are moving from 
point A to B and C. Suppose the destinations B and C are situated in the same direction. What will you do? You will plan for only one moment. You are going to B, then uh, from B itself, you will be moving to C. Then come back from C. So only one moment is enough. Suppose B and C are situated in different directions. Then only you have to plan. First we have to go to B, from A to B. Then come back to A. Then A to C. Then C to A. If B and C are situated in different directions, in that case you can do. Suppose, uh, traditionally, even B and C are located in same direction. Your natural way of work is A to B, B to E. Then A to C, C to E. What will happen? Energy waste, time waste, money waste, motion waste. So you have to reduce the motion. Then you reduce the movement. So for that, maybe it is old procedure, old system, traditional procedure, traditional system. Now, in order to reduce the cost, reduce the energy, I mean, reduce the waste of energy, reduce the time consumed, you have to set, you have to create new procedures. So you have to give instructions to your employees. If both of the destinations are located in the same direction, you go to first direct first location and then straight away from the first location, you go to the second location, then finally you can come back. So this is what called creating new procedures and systems. Then explain new phenomena. So here also some phenomena is there. You have to explain what is it. What phenomena you are following? What phenomena you have given? Or what phenomena you have observed? You have to explain. Then generate new knowledge. Or a combination of any of the F. Some purposes have been given. Either any one of these purposes or some of these uh, purposes combinedly. So combination of any of the above. These are the purposes of research. Then what are the types of research? There are several types of research. We can divide it into different types. We can compare some pairs of types of research. First one, descriptive research and analytical research. These two may be are, uh, considered as pairs of types. Descriptive is one type. Analytical is another type. These are matched as pairs. Pure research, applied research. It is another combination, another pair. Then quantitative research, qualitative research. This is another set of types of research. So let us discuss one by one. First, descriptive research. In this type of research, we are doing certain survey. So by conducting a survey, we are providing certain information by conducting the research and analyzing the data. We are giving certain information. We are giving certain facts. The information is converted into data. The data is converted into fact. So it is a fact finding. Often it is referred to as 
survey research it is aimed at characterizing the phenomena i told you know certain phenomenon is there we have to characterize the phenomena and identifying association among selected variables so descriptive research can be used to number 1 to describe the characteristics of certain groups for example you have taken age as one of the variables and you have divided the age into different groups age groups or uh, gender for uh, for a simple example gender gender is normally classified into two nowadays we are including uh, uh, three groups so group 1 male group 2 female group 3 tg transgenders so there are three groups sometimes your respondents may be uh, included in two groups only male and female so how many male members are there how many female members are there in your sample in your survey how many male respondents are included how many female men, uh, respondents are included what is the proportion proportion means what is the total number of uh, respondents that is sample size in that sample size or in that total how many respondents are male how many respondents are female so calculate the percentage so it is estimated that estimated proportion of people in a specified population who behave in a certain way that certain means the different groups that different groups that is male female age up to 20 years 20 to 40 years 40 to 60 years above 60 years then another demographic or socio economic variable marital status married single nature of family joint family nuclear family education up to school level ug level pg level others occupational status students housewife former employee business people professionals i like that we can categorize so in each category how many people are there how many respondents are there you are describing you are describing the characteristics of certain groups so you are making specific predictions this is what called descriptive research see certain examples are given the proportion of companies that have electronic store front target customers evaluation of key product attributes measuring employee satisfaction for measuring employee satisfaction you are giving uh, certain statements and collecting data in a five point likert scale like highly satisfied satisfied neutral dissatisfied and highly dissatisfied so out of the total respondents how many are highly satisfied how many are satisfied how many are neutral how many are dissatisfied how many are highly dissatisfied like that we are giving the proportion or frequency it is called descriptive research then what is analytical research it involves in depth study so in the previous case it is just a basic study we have just uh, uh, described the characteristics of the variables or the groups but here it involves an in depth study and we are evaluating the available information in an attempt to explain the 
complex phenomena. Earlier, we have characterized the phenomena, that's all. But here, we are explaining the phenomena. So here, the researcher has to use the facts or information already available and analyze these information to make a critical evaluation of the material. So descriptive is uh, just describing the phenomena, characterizing the phenomena, but analytical study involves explaining the phenomena. That's all. So let us have a small view, overview of differentiation between descriptive and analytical research. Descriptive research describes. Analytical research explains. I told you no, it describes the phenomenon. Analytical research uh, explains the phenomenon. So here it is more exploratory, just exploring what is what. But here it is explaining. So analytical research is more explanatory. Here profiles the characteristics of groups. But here analyzes why groups have these characteristics. So that is analytical research. Then what is the main focus? The prime focus of descriptive study is what? What is the question in the case of descriptive study? In the case of analytical study, the focus is on why and how. How, how it has happened? Why it has happened? Here, what is happened? That's all. Then in the case of descriptive study, there is no assumption. There is no hypothesis. But in the case of analytical research, there are certain assumptions. There are certain hypotheses. The hypothesis is tested. In the case of descriptive study, no hypothesis, no test of hypothesis, no assumption. What is what? That's all. Here, why? So we are uh, 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 assuming certain hypothesis. So we are testing the hypothesis. Then in the case of descriptive study, there is no comparison between two or more groups or two or more periods. So a single group is described. Whereas in the case of uh, analytical research, it requires comparison. One group or one variable is compared with another variable. Why this is happening? Like certainly groups are periods. Period one and period two, period three, period four, period five, year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. We are compared. Then here try to minimize the precision of estimates in the case of descriptive research. Whereas in the case of analytical research, it tries to maximize power to detect differences. If there are certain uh, uh, differences, we have to maximize the power to detect the differences in the case of analytical study. Then the next set of uh, types of research pure or basic research and applied research. Basic research and applied research, see. Pure research and applied research. So what is pure research? It is also called as basic research or fundamental research. What is pure research? What is fundamental research? Here, we are developing and evaluating concepts and theories. A new theory 
our concept is evolved. It is not evaluate, evolve to develop and evolve new concepts, new theories. So there is an attempt made by the researcher to expand the limits of knowledge. You have a lot of knowledge that limits of knowledge is expanded. You are thinking about something new. You are uh, profounding a new concept. You know, uh, uh, we have different concepts. Pythagoras theorem is there, you know. Pythagoras theorem is there. It was evolved by Pythagoras. Now we are applying the Pythagoras theorem and checking whether Pythagoras theorem is followed in the current situation or not, in the practical problem or not. So, in the case of uh, pure research, we are not checking, we are not testing an existing theory or existing concept. Here, the research is conducted to evolve new concept. You are giving new concept, totally new theory. See, in the case of uh, the need hierarchy theory, Maslow has divided the uh, needs of uh, human beings into five basic needs, esteem needs, uh, safety needs, I mean, basic needs, safety needs, uh, say ego needs, like that. He has divided into five categories, you know. So that is evolved by Maslow through pure research. Hathro studies. Studies. They have conducted studies in Hathron laboratory. It is conducted to evolve a new concept that is called pure research. So to verify the acceptability of a given theory or to know more about a certain concept. So you are evolving a new concept. You are verifying the acceptability of your concept. You are knowing more and more about that particular concept. For so example, whether or not an individual's perception that he or she was doing well on a task would have any influence or on future performance. What is applied research? Here, what concepts or theories already evolved are now applied to the practical situation. So activities that focus on the development and implementation or commercialization of products or processes or services that lead to stronger organizations. Suppose, for example, for profit, jobs, new markets, economic growth. Similarly, for NFP, improved efficiencies and effectiveness. For government, higher productivity, better service. Like that, the applied research is conducted to test whether the existing concepts or existing theories are applicable to the current situation or not. So let us see the difference between basic research and applied research. Purpose-wise, certain differences are there between basic research and applied research. First one, expansion of knowledge. Knowledge of business processes or management processes. So that is the purpose of your research. We are expanding our knowledge. We have already certain uh, level of knowledge. We are expanding the levels of knowledge on the processes of business or management. In the case of applied research, we are improving our understanding of particular business or management problem. So we are understanding. In the previous one, just knowledge, clear understanding. Then in the case of basic research, 
it is resulted in universal principles so we are giving new principle new concept new theory relating to the process and its relationship to outcomes there is an economic law you know law of diminishing marginal returns when you consume a product repeatedly the returns what you get from that uh, commodity or but pr that product is uh, being reduced by continuous or repeated use of that particular product that is called law of diminishing marginal returns it's a common or universal principle in the case of applied research we are testing whether that principle is applicable to the current situation to the uh, selected firm or selected industry or in this uh, particular region so results in solution to problem certain problems have been taken and we are finding solution to the problem by applying the previous concepts and theories then new knowledge is limited to problem in the case of basic research or pure research i told you no levels of knowledge is expanded so your thinking process is expanded you can think differently in different ways in most possible ways in the maximum possible ways you can think about any particular uh, concept development any particular process of business or management whereas in the case of specific i mean applied research it is more specific rather than general expansion of knowledge so here your knowledge that to you are finding the new knowledge there is no doubt at all that new knowledge is limited to that particular or specific problem only then in the case of basic research or pure research findings of significance and value to society in general what findings you have made it is open to the general society the common people as a whole it is a general law i told you no law of diminishing marginal returns it's a general law demand demand and supply elasticity of demand general law so it is a general here it is specific it is relevant to particular situation particular organization particular industry particular place so these are the difference between pure research and applied research from the point of view of purpose next from the point of view of uh, uh, context here also we have certain differences basic research is undertaken by people based in universities or laboratories here it is undertaken by people based in a variety of settings including any kind of organizations or universities then the choice of topic and objectives are determined by the researcher here the objectives are negotiated with originator with the research supervisor you are modifying the objectives but here if you are conducting a basic research you may consult with others but the decision is yours 
you can decide you are going to determine what topic or what objectives are to be selected then in the case of pure research time scales are flexible but here time scales are tight within one year you have to complete within two years you have to complete so within the specific time frame you have to complete here it cannot be told like that see when uh, uh, the um, a bulb was invented thomas alva edison we don't know how many days he has taken how many months or how many years he has taken we don't know so there cannot be any time frame any time scale for invention for introducing a new concept for introducing a new product for introducing a new process we cannot decide it any time frame so these are the differences from the uh, viewpoint of context that is the difference between pure research and applied research then we shall move on to the next uh, two types of uh, uh, research quantitative research and qualitative research see it is strongly entered both are quantitative quantitative so qualitative and quantitative so first we shall take qualitative research it is the process of collecting and analyzing numerical data quantitative means numerical we are collecting and analyzing the numerical data in order to find patterns and averages we make certain predictions and test the causal relationships through data expressed as numbers based on the numbers is there any causal relationship between the variables between the numbers we are testing the relationship means quantitative research that is in the case of qualitative what is a qualitative research many researchers are more interested in the quality and meaning of a particular activity so the research studies that are conducted to investigate the quality of relationships the quality of activities the quality of situations or the quality of materials they are frequently referred to as qualitative research so here the greater emphasis is given on holistic description so the wholesome description the wholesome view is discussed in the qualitative research are there any differences between quantitative and qualitative research yes from different points of view we have differences we have distinctions between qualitative and quantitative research first one the objective why qualitative research is conducted what is the objective of qualitative research the objective of qualitative research is to gain a qualitative understanding of the underlying reasons and motivations why it is happening why it is preferred what is the reason for selecting this particular brand what is the motivation what is the purpose for which they are using the particular product for that purpose qualitative research is conducted in the case of quantitative research we are using the quantitative data so quantify the data and generalize the results from the sample to the population of interest so it is just describing the quantities or explaining the quantities now come to the sample qualitative research is more suitable for the smaller groups only 
small number of non representative cases for them qualitative research is okay whereas the representative cases are more they are in large numbers in the case of quantitative research then data analysis here in the case of qualitative research there is no need for statistic because here we are giving subjective interpretations in the case of quantitative research statistical methods are involved statistical tools are involved then outcome to develop an initial understanding but in the case of quantitative research it is conclusive it recommends the final course of action so these are the differences between quantitative and qualitative research yet another pair of uh, types of research is there that is uh, um, see here some more differences are there focus on numbers numeric values who what where and when here why and how match with outcomes uh, about knowledge and comprehension here match with outcomes about application analysis synthesis and evaluation here it allows measurement variables that is quantitative here qualitative just a, a, a given in opposite sides uh, don't get confused so use statistical data analysis no statistical data analysis may be generalized it is specific easily replicated here ability to capture or elucidate evidence of student learning and development so these are differences between quantitative and qualitative research i told you no yet another uh, combination of types of research inductive research and deductive research so inductive research begins with a research question collection of data empirical data which is used to generate hypothesis and theory so it starts with research question observation of pattern then tentative hypothesis finally we are generalizing the hypothesis or general we are giving certain theory it is called inductive research whereas in the case of deductive research it is uh, just opposite or merely opposite in the case of deductive research it approaches usually it begins with theory driven hypothesis look at this observation goes up to pattern goes up to tentative hypothesis then goes up to theory here it starts with theory goes down to hypothesis then goes down to uh, observation then confirmation confirmation of the theory so deductive research approaches usually begin with a theory driven hypothesis which guide data collection and analysis so these are the different types of uh, uh, research so we have discussed the different types of research today that is uh, descriptive research analytical research pure research applied research quantitative research uh, qualitative research then finally inductive research and uh, deductive research so these are the different types of research we have understood the meaning and definition of research purposes for which the research is uh, research is conducted and finally we conclude that there are different types of research uh, you have to select any specific type of research according to your requirement so with this note i would like to thank the organizers uh, uh, specifically uh, uh, madam navya shri for having given me wonderful opportunity 
and I, I would like to thank all the participants for your patient listening for the past one and a half hours. Thank you very much. And now it's the time for your uh, uh, queries. If you have any queries, you can unmute your mic and ask the question, or you can uh, put the questions in the chat box. Let me answer. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for sharing the highlights on research. Okay. It was a wonderful presentation. I'm sure we all have got the overview about the research. Now I request the participants to post your queries in the chat box if you have any. I am going through the chat box now and I can see a question here. Navin Tejas asks that, can you please give me an example of inductive and deductive yeah, sure. research? It is like a pure research and applied research. In the case of pure research or uh, uh, fundamental research, we are uh, evolving new concept. But in the case of applied research, the existing concept is tested. Likewise, in the case of deductive research, it starts with uh, data or observation and ends with the theory. So it is like pure research. So in the case of pure research, from the facts or observations, we have come to a conclusion to uh, announce or to uh, introduce a new concept or new theory. Whereas in the case of uh, uh, applied research, the existing theory is taken for discussion. Then finally, we are proving or disproving that the concept is uh, 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 applicable to the current situation or not. So likewise, directive and um, uh, inductive research. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I can see few hands raising. Uh, Mr. Suresh, sir, and Ms. Sarchana, ma'am. Ah. You both have raised the hands. If you have any queries, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Or you can even put it in a chat box. Manju sir is asking applied is same as inductive theory. No, no, no. Applied is deductive. Example. There's a question. Example from for Archana. applied research. Yes, hmm? sir. Yes. Example for applied research. See, I told you no. X theory is there. We are testing whether the X theory is applicable here. We are testing. See. You are um, observing, uh, I mean, you are conducting a research on job satisfaction. So while uh, analyzing the job satisfaction, whether uh, the employees are satisfied or not, we are uh, testing the different um, uh, motivation theories are there now. If we are testing any particular theory uh, to the practical situation, um, uh, that is tested. So that is called applied research. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other questions from other participants? So I don't find any more questions in the chat box. Okay. The participants are asking to share the PPT, sir. Uh, sure. So can I'll, share. I'll share it. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Thank so we'll be sharing the PPT and also the recorded session of sure. all the days people, uh, presentations will be shared to you at the end of the session. So if nobody has any question, we will wind okay. up the Hello. session. Uh, yes, yes. Sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, actually, we uh, I want to compare that uh, two data. Okay. Hello. Yes. I want to, I want to uh, compare the two tables. Hello? Which tables? Which one? Uh, any table uh, on some variables. Variables. Let us discuss later. Today, just introduction. Mm -hmm. That analytical part will be discussed later. Um, okay. Means, uh, my, uh, my question concern to uh, maybe uh, qu uh, quantitative data may be uh, uh, used yeah. as a qualitative. Yeah. Huh. See, in the case of quantitative research, 
as mm -hmm. you told, we are preparing table of numbers, and we are comparing that and all done. Okay, but in the case of qualitative, we are observing how his uh, he is behaving. The uh, uh, data we are collecting from uh, collecting for the qualitative research is it is not uh, uh, close ended. It is open ended. It is not related to quantities. They are just uh, giving the verbal. Uh, uh, responses to the uh, questions. So from that responses, we are analyzing. We are analyzing means the why it is happened. See, you said uh, I am satisfied. It is quantitative. Why you are satisfied? It is qualitative. That is the difference between quantitative and qualitative. Okay. Okay, sir. But. Um my question is not cleared i think actually i am asking the data from quantity okay we are we are we are seeing the number okay and we get the output from the numbers of mm -hmm. two tables then okay. can i use the result as uh, quant uh, qualitative no qualitative from the quantitative research we are uh, Giving the, we are just describing or we are exploring what has happened or what is there in the uh, practical situation that is only explored. No qualitative. Actually, actually, you have made the two two circles, uh, quantitative data and qualitative data. There, there is the common space. Yes. So, uh, what is that one? There is a common space in that. No, no, no. It is just uh, given that. So, uh, uh, just a design is made. That uh, is given like uh, 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 some sets. There is no uh, a common point. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Any other question? Well, it seems there are no more questions from the participants. Thank you so much, sir, for responding and answering to all the questions clearly. Thank you very much. So let's wind up today's session. Okay, ma'am. And we will all join back tomorrow exactly at 5.30 p.m. to learn more and get insights about the research methodology. Today was just an overview about the research. In the upcoming days, we are going to learn about the research methodology in detail. So I request all the participants to join all the sessions for the next five days as well. So with this, we are going to wind up the session once again. I heartfelt thank to Dr. D. Kumar Esen, sir, for the wonderful presentation and for responding to all the questions peacefully and politely. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, madam. Good night. Good night, all the participants. Let us meet tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you all the participants.